Hello everyone and welcome to Split Second. We just hit another great milestone in our path. 10,000 subscribers. We want to thank all of you for your constant support. And to celebrate this, we are doing a special giveaway to all our patrons for the extra support they throw at us. More details coming up in the middle of the video. We also want to announce that we will be coming up to Tier 1 Con in Denmark on the 13th of August. If you haven't heard about it, make sure to check the links in the description to find out more about the biggest TDH event ever put together. Plenty of great content creators will be showing up from all around the world, so make sure you don't miss out on this great opportunity for the greatest CDH gathering. This week we have a friend joining us for a fringe pod. Luis brought his take on Circu Dimir Lobotomist. Helder is piloting Eagle Eagle's Siona Hermit Druid list. Leite is on Croxus Tax Classen, a list also by Eagle Eagle. Unbal brought Avocados Bells and Nows list. Luis is going first and he kept his first 7, with his sunken ruins and an Urborg Tomb of Yogmoth. Vampiric Tutor is great, especially paired with Grim Monolith for ramp and a potential turn 3 ad nauseum. Copy Artifact can also help him with ramp, and if all goes south, he still has Yogmoth's will to try to go at it again. Helder also kept his first hand with the Command Tower and the Temple Garden for lands. A Carpet of Flowers for ramp and Concordant Crossroads is needed to finish the table after assembling infinite tokens from Siona or Sunstrike Legionnaire, which he already has in hand. Hermit Druid is also already in hand and Reclamation Sage can take care of some stacks piece on the field. Late moving and once and found quite an interesting hand with a Swamp and a Badlands for lands. Magos of the Moon can be key to stop at least two decks on the table. Gadrak serves as a good blocker and ramp due to the heavy package of sweepers the deck has, like that Pyroclasm. Wandering Archaic is great value in counter wars as well as a good taxing piece to have around. Reanimate can hit some of his more expensive cards like Vilis if he manages to entomb them. Finally, Bal kept his first hand. Since all of his ramp costs 4, Untaidake or any other land that taps for 2 are great lands to keep to ramp up into an earlier Bells and Lock. Two Swamps and a Mutavolt are his other lands. Crystalline Crawler is a Mana Dork, while Scourge Familiar is a key card for the combo to then finish with the Grey Merchant of Asphodel. Ready for this match? Louis starts the game with an Urborg, so he can Vamp Tutor end of turn. Helder plays a Command Tower and sadly casts a Dry Carpet of Flowers hoping Luis eventually plays some islands. He passes and on latest turn he simply draws and goes to cleanup, not playing anything. He discards a Wandering Archaic and the table is now expecting him to reanimate it next turn. Bal has no Bajuka Bog in his deck, so he plays Untaidake, the Cloud Keeper, and passes. In his end step, Luis fires a Vampiric Tutor for a Jeweled Lotus. He gets to his turn, plays a Sunken Ruins and casts his Grim Monolith. He follows it with a Jeweled Lotus and passes. Helder plays a Temple Garden and tapped, paying 2 life, and since Luis doesn't give him any islands for his carpet, he denies him off of his rocks with a Null Rod. Luis protests and Elder simply shrugs, before passing to Late, who plays a Swamp, then casts Reanimate, targeting his Wandering Archaic. There is no mental misstep, so he loses 5 life as the spell resolves. He passes and Bal draws and plays a Pit Bog. 2 lands tapping for 4 mana is quite good for his plans. He passes and Luis gets to his turn. He fails a land drop but casts a Mystic Remora before passing. Helder is not finding lands nor dorks, so he also passes without actions. Late plays a Badlands and casts Krogs at Titan of Death's Hunger. It enters, triggering to be sacrificed and put into the command zone, and then everyone discards a card. Late then goes to combat and sends the Archaic at Luis before passing. Baal has a craving for an Ancient Tomb or a City of Traitors, but finds none, so he plays a Mutavolt before passing. Luis still pays for the Remora. He draws and plays an underground river and passes as well. Helder also found a land, a flooded strand, that he cracks right away for his savanna. He casts his commander, Siona, captain of the Pileus. It enters and triggers, so he looks at the top 7 cards of his library but fails to find an aura, so he passes. Late plays a swamp and casts a Magus of the Moon. Zero known basics in the field other than his two swamps. He attacks Luis for 4 and passes. Bal draws, plays a swamp and passes, sad as he could be casting his commander turn 4. Luis is in a tight corner, so he still pays for Remora, draws and not finding any lands, he passes to Helder. He draws and goes to combat, he attacks Bal with Siona and also passes, sad that he has no basics in his deck due to the Hermit Druid. Late plays a swamp and casts Gadrak, the Crown Scourge. He keeps the pressure on Luis with his two creatures and passes. Bal plays another Swamp and casts Scourge Familiar, as he might need to block some incoming damage. He passes and Luis finally lets the fish go, a bit unsure if he actually delayed any non-creature spells. He plays a Gemstone Caverns and passes fully untapped. 
Helda draws and goes into combat, sending Siona at Luis before passing. Leite draws and gets a bit worried about Belzenlock. He ponders for a bit and then attacks Baal with the Wandering Archaic and passes. Baal plays a swamp and casts his commander, Demon Lord Belzenlock. It triggers and late responds to it with a Fire Covenant, paying 10 life and attempting to destroy Scourge Familiar, Belzenlock and Siona. Baal then responds to it by activating the Familiar and discarding his 5 cards in hand, for a total of 5 black mana. The table is cleared and then Belzenlock trigger resolves, and Baal goes on to exile his entire library and putting into his hand 31 cards, costing 4 or more and losing 31 life. Baal then casts Dread Return targeting Scourge Familiar. Wandering Archaic triggers, but Late has no cards in his graveyard, so the copy does nothing. Dread Return resolves, bringing the Scourge Familiar and then Baal proceeds to activate it, discarding a bunch of cards. He then evokes Shriekmo and when it enters, he targets Wandering Archaic. He discards 4 more cards and then casts a Living Death. Helder does have a Containment Priest in hand, but Magos of the Moon is stopping him from interacting, so Living Death resolves and the creatures Baal discarded come into play, most importantly, Grey Merchant of Asphodel, that triggers for 34 Devotion. In response to it, as last resort, Luis fires a Dark Ritual, triggering Wandering Archaic and not paying. Late copies it for Triple Black as well. Luis then casts an Ad Nauseum, triggering the Archaic again and not paying, so Late copies it as well. He goes all in as he is dead on the stack, and eventually dies to the Nauseam. Luis then resolves his Nauseam also in despair as he has no stifle in the deck. He goes all in and dies to it. Baal can now sacrifice Asphodel to Phantasmagorian, triggering and dying from Mikaeus and drain another 34, but he simply fires a Soul Spike to finish the deal. GG. Some stacks delayed everyone in the table, but eventually Magus of the Moon stopped everyone else to interact as well, and Baal pulled this one off. Since this was a quick match, we decided to play another one. Before we see the starting hands, we will now show you the details of our giveaway. We have two prizes for two lucky patrons, to be drafted in the beginning of September, so you have one month to be eligible to enter, by becoming a patron of any tier, or for a juicier prize, a stack breaker. Our first prize will be randomly given to one of our stack breakers and includes a foil promo pack from Kaldheim and D&D sets, as well as a normal pack from D&D and three pretty buy box promos. After the first prize is raffled, we have a second one, to be drafted between any patron of any tier, and it includes a foil promo pack of Kaldheim and two regular promo packs from D&D, as well as these promos. These prizes were graciously sponsored by our LGS Arena Porto. This time, Late won the die roll and found quite the stacks he had. A single Verdant Catacombs for Lance, but with the Crow Mox to help it out. Cursed Totem can be key to stop one of Siona's lines, while Waste Knot is great paired up with Krosa for added value. Chains of Mephistopheles can also stop some draw engines and Duress can be fired directly at some player if he goes for the Gorger combo. Demonic Tutor is always great to have at hand. Ball kept his first hand again, this time due to having a Cavern of Souls for a sure Bells and Lock especially after his opponents had seen what he is capable of. Two more swamps, a Vesuva that might become an Ancient Tomb or Cradle and a Blast Zone that can deal with Deafening Silence and other stack species. Jairus Familiar is semi-ramp and Black Mana Battery is an expensive rock. Luis had to mulligan down to 6 this time around. He found an Underground River and a Snow-Covered Island for lands, with a Grim Monolith for ramp and a Dark Ritual that might enable him to shit in an Opposition Agent. Windfall can help on refilling after dumping his hand and the bottomed River of Tears. Finally, Helder kept his first hand with another Lonely Wooded Foothills, but with the Birds of Paradise and the Priest of Titania for ramp. Containment Priest can be detrimental versus Bells and Locks, Living Death and even World Guardian Loops. Hermit Druid found its way back, and maybe now he will see play, and who knows, survive a turn cycle, and with enough mana for Savin's Reclamation, Helder might secure a win. Sylvan Library will be great to refill his hand as well. Ready for round 2? Late starts his turn with a Verdant Catacombs, that he cracks for a Badlands. He then casts a Chromox, imprinting a Duress, and then casts a Waste Knot. Not wasting any time, he passes to Baal, who plays a Proxied Swamp. Yes, in case you haven't noticed, this list runs 42 swamps and 65 lands total. It's Luis's turn and he starts it by casting a Gitaxin Probe targeting Helder, since Baal only starts playing around turn 4 and late only has 4 cards in hand. He then draws from the probe and plays his Underground River before passing. Helder gets to his turn, plays his Wooded Foothills and innocently cracks it, to which Luis responds with a Dark Ritual into, you guessed it, a position agent. Elder protests that he saw his one lender hand, and that's actually the main reason to fire Agent this early. One less opponent to Luis, one less friend to Elder. 
Luis gets a Dryad Arbor and Elder bleakly passes. Late gets to his turn and not finding lands, he fires his Kroxa, triggering and sending it to the command zone. And then everyone discards one card from their hands. Two non-lands allow him to draw two cards and the discarded land gives him double black. He plays an untapped Blood Crypt and then casts a Talisman of Indulgence, with which he casts a Chain of Mephistopheles before passing. Baal simply plays a Blast Zone to eventually uptick it and have a little say in the table, and passes. Luis draws and goes to combat. He sends the agent at late, as he has quite the scary board. He then plays a Snow Island and casts a Grim Monolith before finishing his turn. Helder draws and, not finding a land, he sadly passes. Late plays a Luxury Suite and keeps up with his plan, casting Kroxa and hopefully trimming down his opponent's hands as well as getting value from Waste Knot. He orders the trigger so they discard first and then is able to better choose where to send Kroxa, Yard or Command Zone. Everyone discards and he gets 3 draws, which due to Shames of Mephistopheles becomes discard then draw. Kroxa's sacrifice trigger then resolves and he lets it stay in the graveyard as he just filled it a bunch. He passes and Ball simply draws, plays a swamp and passes, threatening to blast zone for 2 next turn. Luis plays Elder's Dried Harbor and attacks Ball with the agent as everyone now better understands his deck. He then casts his commander, Circo the Mirlo Bottomist, and passes. Helder finally finds a land, a savanna. He casts a Birds of Paradise and passes. However, as late gets to his turn, he shreds Helder's dreams of ever playing this game by casting a Curse Totem. And since stopping Darks is not enough, he casts a Magus of the Moon. Ball responds by putting a counter on Blast Zone in case Magus ever comes out. And as the wizard enters the field, we're having a slight deja vu of game 1. Late passes and Ball draws and plays Untaidake, the Mountain Keeper and casts his Joyer's Familiar, before passing. Luis plays a Sunken Hollow and goes to combat, sending everything at Baal, who shunt blocks the agent with Joyer's Familiar. Luis passes and Elder finds his second mountain, a Bountiful Promenade. He keeps on enjoying the show and passes to late. In his turn, he casts a Yogmoth's Wheel, which resolves. He plays a Swamp from his graveyard and then casts Demonic Tutor from his graveyard and searches for a final parting, hoping to resolve it and win next turn. He then attacks Baal with the Magus and passes. In his turn, Baal plays another Swamp and probes the table for some solutions to latest board and tutor. It seems Magus is really stopping magic from being played, so he casts Living Death to deal with Magus as well as bring Opposition Agent again to maybe stop any more tutors. Luis responds with a Mystical Tutor, triggering Circo and targeting Late, who exiles Third Grid. Luis and Baal then talk about the most likely scenario where Baal is sacrificing his Blast Zone in his next turn, so maybe some interaction can be key to hold on latest horses. Luis then gets a Mana Drain and then Living Death resolves, bringing among other creatures Kroxa, which triggers and everyone discards, giving some more mana and one discard draw too late due to Chains of Mephistopheles. Kroxa is once again left in the graveyard and Baal passes to Luis. He draws Mana Drain as his only card in hand attacks late for 3 and passes. In his end step, Elder flashes in a Containment Priest. In his turn, he finds and plays a Brushland. He then casts a Priest of Titania and goes to combat, sending the Containment Priest at late before passing. Late plays a Mountain and flashbacks Faithless Looting, knowingly discarding and drawing, discarding and drawing, and then discarding too due to Chains of Mephistopheles. Late ends up discarding his Tutored card as the twist of events totally nullified his plans. After filling his yard, he casts a Cabal Ritual with Threshold, getting 5 black mana. He then escapes Kroxa to pull out Mana Drain from Luis's hand. Since he only has that one card, he does fire it in order to bank in some mana for his next turn. Kroxa is still left in the graveyard and then late fires his desired card, Bottomless Pit. The table takes a good read at the card just before he passes. In Baal's upkeep, he randomly discards a Swamp, giving 2 mana to late, which he doesn't have use for. Baal then plays his Cavern of Souls, which enters and he actually names Zombie, so he can cast an uncountable Grey Merchant in case he finds it to recoup some life, since he cannot cast Bells and Lock below the current threshold of 32 life. Baal passes and Luis top decks nicely and asks Baal if he doesn't want to crack his Blast Zone right now. He replies he won't let Leighton tap with it on the field unless Luis proactively casts a Will, and a Will it is. Luis casts a Time Twister with his two generic mana from Mana Drain. No one else responds and Ball cracks his Blast Zone for 2. Twister is then resolved and we seem to be playing a new game again. Luis then sends the agent at late and on his second main phase he plays and cracks a Polluted Delta for an Underground Sea and casts an Arcane Signet before passing. In Helder's upkeep, Bottomless Pit triggers and he discards a Luminarch Ascension. He then plays a Sarah Sanctum and casts an Elvish Mystic. 
He then enchants it with a Karametra's favor, drawing a card when it enters and passes to Late. Late gets to his upkeep and randomly discards a Marsh Flats. He plays a Swamp and casts a Pyroclasm. It resolves and then he casts Ragavand Nimble Pilferer. He follows the monkey with the Trinisphere, to which Luis doesn't flinch in responding with the Mana Drain he luckily drew again. Late passes and Bald now randomly discards a Swamp to the pit. He draws, plays a Mistress Factory and casts Cavalier of Night to attempt to regain some life back. He passes and on Luis's upkeep, he randomly discards a Yogmoth's Wheel. He gets 3 generic from Mana Drain, plays a City of Brass and then casts Circo again before passing. Elder randomly discards a Sunstrike Legionnaire, draws, plays a Forbidden Orchard and casts a Reclamation Sage, entering and destroying Bottomless Pit before handing his turn. Late has finally lost some fuel, he plays a Bloodstained Mire and cracks it for his Swamp. Without much else to do, he casts Kroxa, triggering for his opponents to discard and then to be sacrificed and he lets it stay in the graveyard. Without good attacks, he passes. Bal draws and goes straight to combat, sending his Cavalier at Luis. He then plays a Swamp and decides to go for it, casting Bells and Lock. It resolves and triggers, so he gets all of his non-land cards to his hand, for a total of 29 life lost. He then casts a Deepwood Legate for free, since there is no moon effect and Elder does control a forest. He then casts a free Unmask targeting himself by exiling Uncle Istvan. He chooses and discards Phantasmagorian, to which he activates, discarding 3 cards from his hand to return it to his hand again, Dread Return, Scourge Familiar and a Hydran Archive. He then casts a Hollow One for free and now flashbacks Dread Return by sacrificing 3 creatures to return Scourge Familiar to the battlefield. However, in response, Luis fires a Drawn in the Lock, sealing his fate. Circo triggers twice and he targets both Helder and Late with him. Late is also thrown out of the game by exiling World Gorgia Dragon and Helder exiles a Graft Digger's Cage. Bal accepts his fate and discards to hand size before passing. Luis gets to his turn and casts a Counterbalance, triggering Circo and targeting Late, exiling a land. He then passes and Elder casts his commander, Siona, Captain of the Pileas. Triggering Counterbalance and Luis reveals a Limb Tools Vault. Siona then triggers and actually fizzles. He then plays a tap Temple Garden and passes. Late plays a Mountain and escapes Kroxa, momentarily forgetting about the Limb Tools Vault. Counterbalance does its thing and he passes, not so sad as he has nothing else to do in hand. Bal gets to his turn and taps and loses as he attempts to draw from an empty library. Luis simply draws and passes fully untapped. Helder plays his Trip Mine and casts Helios Pilgrim. Triggering Counterbalance and Luis reveals a land, so Helder safely tutors for Shielded by Faith, which he then tries to cast targeting Siona, giving Late a spirit from the Orchard. However, in response, Late fires a Chaos Warp onto Siona, which is sent to the command zone and he reveals a Wooded Bastion to the warp. As his attempt at winning fails, Helder passes. Late simply draws and passes without great options. In his end step, Luis casts his Limdul's Vault, triggering Circo and targeting both his opponents, exiling two lands. In response, however, Late fires a Pyroblast, also foiling Luis's plans at winning. Luis then draws and plays his Bloodstained Mire and passes again without any action. Helder draws and ponders on his options of getting Hermit Druid to survive a turn cycle, and then goes for it and fires a Green Sun Zenith X equals 2. Counterbalance triggers and he reveals a Mox Opal. Late then responds to the Zenith and flashes in an Opposition Agent. Now we know why he wasn't playing anything. Luis responds to the Counterbalance trigger and cracks his fetch for a Snow Swamp. He shuffles up, cuts the deck and reveals Mox Opal again. What? Late is able to see the Lonely card in Helder's hand, and as he goes through Helder's deck, he exiles a Tokatli Honor Guard, as it can block Circu and prevent any Thassa's Oracle shenanigans, as well as getting his Kroxa to stick. Helder casts his last card in hand, burgeoning to enable its Error Sanctum at last. It's now Late's turn and he casts Tokatli right away. He then fires an Abrade at Luis's Circu and goes to beatdown mode, attacking him for 6 damage. Ragavan triggers and he gets a treasure and exiles Luis's Mox Opal. Late then casts the Opal and Counterbalance Trigger actually reveals a Mana Crypt, effectively countering it. Luis draws and casts his Mana Crypt and passes, as his single card in hand still doesn't do much. Helder top decks a good card, so he casts Siona again, counterbalance triggers and reveals a Swan Song. However, as Elder is casting the top decks of Vince Reclamation, he notices that the Shielded by Faith is actually an ETB trigger, so it's fizzled by Tokatli. This way, he targets Luminarch Ascension as he now has a safer board to block latest creatures. Luis gets a spirit in the process and Elder passes. Later draws, plays a Swamp and casts Kroxa. 
counterbalance trigger is still Swansong, and having its ETB nullified by Tukatli, he goes right away into combat, and sends everything at Luis, who doesn't flinch before casting his overloaded Cyclonic Rift. In response, Late cracks his treasure and taps his Chromax for black, and still in the same step, he flashes in Opposition Agent, before his mana pool empties and then passes. Luis gets to win his crit roll, he casts his commander again and attacks Helder with his spirit, before passing. Helder starts his turn by casting Siona, triggering counterbalance, and the demonic tutor is revealed. Siona resolves and triggers, and he manages to find Presence of Gond, which allows him to win with Sunstrike Legionnaire. But he still needs to pull out that Swan Song somehow. He casts Burgeoning to bring Sanctum online again and passes. Late starts his turn dashing Ragavan and attacking Helder with him. He gets a treasure and exiles a Destiny Spinner. Late then plays in cracks his calling turn, but he actually fails to find, so he just passes. Luis still gets to win his crit roll, draws the DT and passes without great options. Helder starts by casting Reclamation Sage, triggering Counterbalance and revealing a land. The Sage enters and destroys Counterbalance. He then casts Luminarch Ascension and Luis lets it resolve, since resolving a Savin's Reclamation means victory. We are on latest turn and he casts his Krogs again. This time, Helder responds by flashing in Hushwing Griffin, so he stops losing cards from hand. Late gets his spirit from this, then casts Ragavan and passes. Luminarch Ascension gets its first counter. Luis's script is still on the winning side. He draws and plays his command tower and passes, still unable to do anything or even pressure the Ascension, which gets its second counter. Helder draws and plays a Reflecting Pool. He then casts a Priest of Titania and follows that with Tokatli Honor Guard, since a simple remove spell could free way to a Thoracal. Late draws and plays an Ancient Tomb. He goes to combat and sends everything at Helder. Crocs the triggers and they discard tutoring dead cards. Helder blocks the spirit and the monkey and takes 9 before Late passes the ball to Luis. His crit now slaps him for 3 damage and he simply draws and passes, giving Luminarch Ascension one more counter. Helder mimics Luis with a draw go, aiming to win beatdown mode with some angels. Late draws and casts Thrill of Possibility, discarding a Chromox, one of his most played kind of cards in this channel. He finally found something. He casts a Rolling Earthquake X equals 4, clearing this way the table. He then attacks Elder with Croxa, triggering and dealing some more damage as well as stripping Luis of his Swan Song. He goes to his second main phase and casts a Soul Ring, followed by an Underworld Breach, just so he can recast Opposition Agent and still have his opponents in check. He also escapes Ragavan and then passes. Luis still wins his crit roll and taps out to cast Circo again. After that, he plays a Tabernacle at Pendrel Vale and passes. On his end step, however, Luminarch Ascension gets its fourth and decisive counter, and Elder activates it to get five angels, giving a flightless spirit to Luis. Elder gets to his upkeep and pays five for the Tabernacle triggers. He draws and goes straight into combat, sending the five angels at late, who by now noticed he should have Chaos Warped the Ascension last turn. Elder still has the win on board, so he simply passes. Luis still manages to win his crit roll and pays for his two creatures, however, he didn't find anything good, so he fires a mnemonic betrayal, and taking a better look at Helder's graveyard, he sees no out and scoops it up. GG. Thank you for joining us for today's match, everyone. Bells and Locks stole the first round out of some lack of knowledge of what a deck does, and in the second match, Luis had key plays that stopped Ball and Leite from winning, but eventually couldn't release everything and Elder claimed his victory. We'd like to start the credits by thanking our current patrons, and especially Izanagi, TG Rap, Mike Purr, Ajimo, Uncrustable, Drunken Housecat, V, RJ, Heated Chill, and Pina, our latest tag breaker. If you want to support us, you can do so by liking this video, subscribing, or by becoming a patron yourself. If you want to go through other Commander adventures, click one of the videos on the right. If you want to talk with us about our games or other EDH-related matters, join us on Discord. Join us again next week for a new set of commanders and more decisive plays. See you all then!